All of the Loyalist Space Marine Legions were well known for their glorious victories in the Emperor's name. But among the Legionnaires Astartes, there was perhaps one that deserved to be raised above the others in glory, for they were called upon to be the defenders of Holy Terra itself. It was born as simply the Seventh Legion, but became better known as the Imperial Fists. First raised from recruits across all of Terra, they were swiftly reunited with their Primarch Rogel Dorn early in the Great Crusade. He based his new legion on a massive starship, the Fortress Monastery Phalanx, and led them to war in the Great Crusade where they quickly accumulated a record second only to the Lunar Walls, the Legion of Warmaster Horus himself. In particular, the Imperial Fists became known for being experts at siege warfare, equally renowned for their ability to create practically unbreakable fortifications as they were at being adept at ripping down the defenses of their foes as well. This created a sharp rivalry with the Iron Warriors as Perturabo's sons viewed themselves as the masters of this kind of warfare. When the Horus Heresy broke out, there was intense and bitter conflict between these two legions. The Imperial Fists were ultimately all recalled to mankind's homeworld to fortify it and prepare for Horus's assault. As the storyline in Horus Heresy Legions brings us to the Siege of Terra, this Friday, April 23rd, we shall see the Imperial Fists added as the latest Loyalist Legion for you to play on the battlefield. In this video, we shall take a look at the very first of their cards and understand a unique new mechanic which they will bring to the game. We start with Garadin Squad. An otherwise average troop costing 2 energy and having 2 attack and 2 health, you will notice a new icon at the left of the card. This is the new mechanic for the Imperial Fists, Bastion, which represents in-game how this Legion was the master of fortification. Bastion is a fairly straightforward mechanic. Any damage received by a unit with Bastion must first reduce the Bastion value to zero before the damage can then apply to the health. The exception to this is when the Imperial Fist unit attacks, in which case it will take damage to its health directly as normal from the attack value of the unit which it is attacking. After all, when the Sons of Dorn sally forth out of their positions to assault the enemy, they don't benefit from the protection of their positions anymore. Let me clarify a few more details about Bastion. It is not like Drop Pod, so you do not need two separate hits to destroy a Bastion unit. A single big hit will be enough. It will degrade as it takes damage, so it effectively acts as an extra pool of health. So if Garadin Squad enters play with Bastion 2, and then it takes a single point of damage from an enemy ability, it will be reduced to Bastion 1. If it takes three more points of damage from another tactic or ability, or frankly from an attack, then the first point of incoming damage will destroy the remaining Bastion value, and the last two points of damage will then destroy Garadin Squad. In game, once a unit is in play, the Bastion value will be visible next to the health of the card to make it very clear. In addition, the only damage that ignores Bastion when the Imperial Fist unit is attacking is the damage from the attacked unit's own attack value only. If any other effects trigger from the Imperial Fist attack, such as Rage or Backlash, the damage inflicted to the troop will first apply to any remaining Bastion on the Imperial Fist before it goes through to the Imperial Fist's health. With that, it is time to see a more substantial troop. Templar Brethren is a 6 energy cost Astartes with 5 attack and 4 health. These below average stats are compensated for with Bastion 3, which potentially makes it 5 attack and 7 health, just about average for the energy cost if the situation is right to maximize the value which you get from Bastion. However, they bring something extra to the battlefield. When you put them in play, your Warlord gains Bastion 3. 
Since your Warlord will always end up being targeted at some point during any match, this is effectively a Warlord healing unit and as such suddenly looks quite attractive to put into a deck. Let us move on to the final card of this video, the epic tactic Stalwart Defenders. Coming in at a reasonable 4 energy, this card makes your Warlord give 1 point of Bastion to any of your troops that have survived until the start of your turn. With Bastion abilities on many of their cards, the Imperial Fist troops are already the hardest ones for your enemies to kill during their own turn, and this tactic builds on top of that. If an Imperial Fist player can get a solid board presence to build up and survive, this tactic could really give some trouble. And of course, because it is an epic card, you could theoretically play two of them and dig in very, very deep. And so we have had our first glimpse of the Imperial Fists, the faction with quite possibly the most difficult troops to kill of them all. I really think the Bastion mechanic looks like a great way of representing the 7th Legion's specialty in war and I'm looking forward to seeing how they perform in Horus Heresy Legions. They are coming out to buy in Legion crates and to try and win from event reward crates in the new event this Friday, so I will see you on the battlefield and crush you with them in just a couple of days. Thanks for watching everyone and goodbye for now.